Alrighty guys, I'm Jason and today's Auto Edits video is gonna be kind of a straightforward mechanical tip on how to prevent causing damage to your engine by doing a dry oil start if it's your vehicle's been sitting for any length of time, couple days to a couple of weeks. Now, my Jeep has been sitting for a couple of weeks. There's a really awful reason why. Not gonna get into that now. Uh, I'll talk about that at the end of the video. I wanna just kind of stay on task right now, but haven't been out here, haven't driven it. Uh, not even sat in it. So um, what happens, as we all know, vehicles have need motor oil or engine oil to lubricate all of the systems in the engine. Crankshaft, camshaft, valve train, variable valve timing, VVT. You ever wonder what that stands for? That is a very important uh, operation for all of these new modern engines. So what happens is when all of that oil is circulating through the system and the vehicle sits for a day or so, that stuff tends to stay in places enough to where it can get back to the necessary or critical areas quickly. But as the engine sits for over several days or weeks, all of that oil, gravity just takes it all back down into the oil pan or the sump and it all gathers down there. Now, if you were to just get in this vehicle right now and start it up, it would take a few seconds for the oil pump to distribute all of that oil back through all of those critical areas. There's a couple of things I've picked up over the years from engineers about things like the piston skirts scuffing the, the cylinder walls on dry startups. That's like one of the hardest things on a freshly started or a newly starting up engine. So just cold starting it or dry starting it, as they say, is really difficult on the thing. So I always like to stack the deck in my favor and I'll show you this technique of how to crank the engine without it starting for a few seconds to build some oil pressure into the engine and then we'll start it. So I'll teach you the wide open throttle technique that I use and many manufacturers and you could just check online to see if yours does. I know Toyota, BMW, Porsche, Ford, and all of the Chrysler, Stellantis, Dodge, Jeep, whatever you want to call them, products use this technique. And that's just basically when you hold your foot to the floor on the gas pedal and turn the key, it disables the fuel and the uh, ignition. So it will not start. So you can turn the engine using the starter motor, build that pressure. I'll go through that. And I thought while I have you guys here with me in the engine bay, we'll do two things. Uh, let's talk about why you see this. I take care, I overly take care of my batteries and they last a decades because of that. Just remember to just throw your battery on the charger. I did a video featuring all of my Optima stuff and this thing is amazing. Even if you drive your vehicle all the time, just throw this thing on it once in a while overnight and let it condition and then now you'll see it's saying maintaining 12 volt battery. I love this thing. The peace of mind that it gets and I still have batteries in. I just put my old yellow top in my square body. That thing I got in 2006 I think still going. So and it's just from little maintenance things like this that I think make a huge difference. So that's a quick battery tip on just how to keep your battery just absolutely tip top. Just having that overnight uh, conditioning and maintaining thing just seems to keep the cells happier. Now, what I wanna show you is the engine oil level on this engine before we start it and get that oil circulated to show you what the level looks like. And then once we start it, I'll show you what the level looks like on the dipstick. So you can see right here that the oil just shows just over the knob here at the top. So it's just slightly overfill according to this now, but it'll be kind of cool to see what that looks like after we start it and let it rest. So the technique is very simple. You would just push the throttle to the floor while you turn your engine over. Now this is a manual transmission Jeep, so I'm gonna have to push the clutch in while I do that, and I'll go ahead and do this. So throttle is to the floor. I'm gonna turn the key on, and then we'll crank about five to 10 seconds. One alligator, two Mississippi, three Dolly Parton, four alligator. 
pretty good for me. And that just gives that a chance. That's what it was about five, six, seven seconds. Now I'll just release the, my foot off the throttle pedal. And now I have my camera with a good microphone out there in the engine bay. So watch this and I'll let you hear it start up. Sounds fantastic. Sounds like it's been running. I've been running errands, so perfect. So that's the key for me to how to save that wear and tear on that initial startup on the engine. So I'm gonna just let it sit and warm up for a second. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna rev it up and just really let the valve train get kind of reduced up now that it's been running for a second here. All right, so let's check this thing. Let's see what we got. So it looks like it's literally right on the full. What would you call that? So I would say right on the full, right in this area, whereas before it was just over the little attachment point here on the little bob here. So there you go. That's how much oil is distributed throughout the lubrication system of this thing. And now the Jeep is considered, I would consider to be back ready in service. So we will now be able to drive this thing. Now, let me take you over to the, uh, uh, headquarters there and catch you up on some things around here and some plans for this and what's going on. All right, glad to have the Jeep back in action. Um, let's talk about some of the serious stuff really quick. My girl, Pinto the dog, passed away a few weeks ago and it's been extraordinarily difficult. Not the way I wanted. She was a old girl, she was 14, but you're never ready. And she was a huge part of my life. You saw how much I integrated her into the channel. That wasn't fake. This, this dog was everything to me and she was very special and unique. So my heart goes out to anybody who has lost a pet. Um, think a good thought for Pinto, but life goes on. And uh, hey, thank you, Luke, for sending this uh, very wonderful photo that uh, I put up in my office uh, to remember her by. And uh, it's very much appreciated. So. Um, for those of you that reached out on Instagram, um, I kind of went MIA for a while because this was hard. This was really hard for me. I, I, I know I, I go back and forth between being guilty because it's just a dog, but she's more than just a dog. She was my only companion. It's just me and her around here. So it's everything. And she was there for me. Like, you know how pets can be, how these animals can be. She was there for me in some of the most important times. And uh, I'll never forget that. She was a, a special one. So. All right, that is now behind us. We'll remember Pinto forever for me. And uh, moving forward here on the channel, here on the projects, um, the Jeep. I, am, I actually have some really grandiose plans to um, really kind of rework the Jeep here. I went to a, a trade show, the, the outdoor show here in LA and happened by my friends at the metal cloak booth and saw some rigs with their long arm kits on them. And man, I have the lock and load long arm in the front and the DB3 brackets on this thing and I'm super happy with it, but I'm gonna reach out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to them and see about going full four link and long arm, front and rear on the Jeep. And they have those really amazing shocks coming up. So I'm looking to do a full transformation on the Jeep here in the next very short amount of time, next few months. I really wanna just dig in and do that on this thing. Even though the Jeep is great, uh, I'm really happy with it as it is. Uh, I think it would be a wonderful, fun project. Plus, uh, I've been getting some requests for maintenance. Like these things, this is a 10 year old rig. And so people want to know spark plugs, coolant, the thermostat housing, uh, the oil cooler housing. Mine hasn't cracked yet. Um, so I'm going to dive into a bunch of the, of this range of maintenance to the thing as well and do some fun how to videos on all of those maintenance items. If you have some suggestions, put them in the comments here for me. And uh, that's what's coming up on the Jeep. Don't know what I'm gonna do with the Tahoe right now. It's kind of redundant. I love the thing. I drive the snot out of it. Looking for inspiration or um, some ideas on what to do with it as a project vehicle, maybe need to pass that on to uh, the next owner who can do the interior, maybe do some paint and take it to the next level. Um, Again, put some feedback in the comments. Got the square body on the side yard uh, ready to go. I just run errands in it and all that stuff. So 
that's what's happening here. I'm getting ready and looking forward to moving forward and uh, getting out there and making some great content and going on some adventures. So thank you so much for making it this far into this video and getting through all that. Again, I want those comments. I want that interaction. Uh, it really helps me right now. Uh, that Instagram post with a bunch of people commenting and Facebook post as well uh, really saved my bacon. Um, yeah, chime off on some ideas and some support. Uh, let me know what you think. And uh, whew, I don't know if this is gonna get any easier, but I miss my dog. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Till next time, enjoy your drive.